Yeah, another response video to the modern mystic. I think he made a really poor video here. So, he must have gotten sober and quit smoking. Did that a long time ago. But anyway, I'm just playing with his, like, he thinks Grey Tex is making better videos as a drunk smoker when he was, you know, no, he's, he's, Grey Tex is an idiot. But whatever. Believe what you want to believe. Anyway, sorry, waste of time. Get to the point. All right, so he made a video um, in defense of his vegetarianism without talking about his vegetarianism. So the conversation he had in the context of his vegetarianism was a conversation about how to play, uh, impress women, the biology of impressing, the biology of behavior. So he told a story, and I'm just going to call it a story because I don't think it has anything to do with the truth, um, about how human beings evolved. And... Yeah, I think it was just kind of rubbish, um, and, you know, and that somehow women became attracted to men who showed kindness, and that somehow that kindness would be a reflection of their fatherly skills, or how much, how well they take care of them, or some kind of crap like that. And the subtle statement in it, I suppose, the subtle statement was, yes, yeah, see, so that's kind of what I was doing. I was pretending to be a kind person, so the chicks would dig that. And, uh, you know, yeah, that's how I bagged the wife, um, you know, was pretending to be a kind person. Um, so, yeah, so he just kind of obfuscated the whole issue of vegetarianism. So he's, he's basically conceded that he's a vegetarian for convenience, um, a, you know, almost a malicious vegetarian, like I'm faking it. <laughs> you know, I'm doing it for a fake, completely fake, re a completely selfish reason that has nothing at all to do with any kind of ethical dynamic at all. And so that just makes him even, I mean, that's just so like, ew, well, that's really scuzzy to admit. Um, but anyway, regardless, I mean, you shouldn't even be able to call yourself a vegetarian when you're doing it for such a backward reason. I mean, that's like the people who are vegetarian for health reasons. I mean, they, they should call themselves something else, you know, like a strivist or something or a something, you know, some other, a healthiest or something, you know, and it, it could still mean they're vegetarian, but yeah, they're vegetarian because they just don't like meat and they think vegetables are kick-ass. Um, but anyway, that's the, that's what's under, underlying this context of this video. Okay, so that's the, the underlying context, the, the little flowy bits around here that he didn't really directly address. But that's what his subtle statement is. I'm vegetarian because I had a reflexive reaction saying, look, if you act like you are caring and decent, women will get all wet and horny for you. So anyway, so now I'll talk about that theory, which I think is absolute crap. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> okay, like when women and men, the relationship between men and women evolved, it didn't evolve all that different than any other tribal thing or pack animal. You could go to lions or wolves or whatever, even the great apes. And the real game is the alpha game. The real game is, is who gets the biggest share. So in, for the men, the competition is, is how, how, how capable am I of getting the biggest piece of whatever we go out and hunt or whatever we go out and do? Who Am I, am I capable of bringing home the bacon, uh, quote unquote? And that's really what the game is about. Am I a survivor? Am I a good fighter? You know, maybe I have some battle scars to demonstrate it. You know, that turns women on. It does. <laughs> you, know, um, you know, you know, because that, that just shows that I can fight, I can play the game, and I'm surviving, okay? That's what women are. That's one of the primary mechanisms, I would argue, a primary um, evolutionary dynamic was certainly the alpha contest. Okay, we can see that in women. They choose men who are preposterous assholes, who don't give a shit about them or their kids. All right, and they chose them because, God, he's cool. You know, that kind of shit. Okay, um, and, and, and that's the, 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 that was far more a significant dynamic than any dynamic where the women were foraging through the stuff and they, they saw a little kind of stylish guy go, ooh, little butterfly, and he let the little butterfly go. Yeah, no, no, sorry, no sale. And yeah, and she shagged that guy. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Um, so anyway, I just thought that was just kind of bad. You know, let's just make up shit. So I'll make up my version. My version is, yeah, no, 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 it's all about the alpha shit and looking, 
looking like you're the man, the owner. You're the guy who's going to get the biggest piece of the shit so you can bring home the biggest piece of the shit to her. Okay? That's what she's looking for. And, and uh, yeah. You know, somebody passionate in the game, fighting hard and winning. That's what they want. Um, so, anyway. That whole side issue. Okay? Because I don't think this has anything to do with the fucking subject. Again, we're back to this idea that the mystic actually thinks that your philosophy is a biological mechanism entirely. Not that that's what it's made out of, like that's the foundation of it. Of course, it's a biological mechanism. But this biological mechanism is completely being filtered by a progressive enhancement, a cleansing. Uh, that's what education and intelligence is. It's a cleansing. The bullshit gets thrown out. Flat Earth gets thrown out. Nonsense I Thunder, Thor, yeah, that gets thrown out. All the nonsense crap gets thrown out and it gets cleaner and cleaner and cleaner as it progresses through time. That's, what in, that's the, the growth of intelligence. And that's not a biological mechanism. It's a fucking structural one where we are duplicating the, the, the fundamental um, fact-based nature of reality. Reality is explicit. Reality is one thing. It's one truth. It doesn't have multiple truths. It's, 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 it's got a hard, linear, straight line truthness about it. And our brain is doing the logic that is fundamental to those principles of cleansing, of, of you know, pi, uh, you know, radius, circ <coughs> circumference, relationships. There's hard relationships in the world. And our brain is acquiring knowledge of those hard relationships, the hard connection between words or concepts or ideas. And we're gleaning that out of reality. And it's not a biological function. It's a... I mean, it is. I mean, obviously it is the universe universing, but it's definitely that you only universe, you only do this tornado thing through specific physics. The tornado doesn't paint a smiley face and wink its eye at you or do some other thing. It does a certain thing based on a structure. And our structure of our intelligence is to be a filter, to glean out nonsense and acquire useful information, stuff that's about reality. <sighs> anyway, manipulating reality. We, we're trying to manipulate the environment and the tool to manipulation, the best tool is the truth. It gives you a great deal of power, generally speaking. I mean, some lies are advantageous, and we can talk about that, because that's the corrosive element. Once it gets this machine starts, it starts pointing in directions the, 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 the ape doesn't want to see, so it starts bending the logic, you know, to cheat the system, because it doesn't like where the truth is going. Um, all right, so, so he's, he's going to talk about this whole conversation in some sort of like we're just knee-jerking, and we are just knee-jerking, that the concepts are tied together, but they're tied together, in, 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 you know, by a necessity of, of coherency. So you have, to, uh, you have to acknowledge the fact that the connections you make, when they're not coherent, you've basically sinned against your intelligence. You know you're lying. You know you're full of shit. And that's what most people are doing. They, they, they're cheating the coherency. They know two things don't add up, and they're just pretending that they do. And you're the eight-man boy for me. She never understands anything. Now, so he's used this word, understand. So, so again, he's, he's, he's reducing your intelligence to say that the idea that you've, you've tied concepts together, like the color red and aggression, let's say, um, are, um, you, know, you know, just, you know, pliers and you could associate it with teeth and pulling teeth out. The, these rational connections, now, you're not, you don't understand pliers and their connection to teeth in some kind of, like, Oh, the, I understand it, and that's some ambiguous thing. No, it's a direct connection. There's direct reflexes. There's one reflex that recognizes pliers. There's another reflex that has recognized teeth. And there's no, another reflex that ties the two together and ties that to dentist and ties that to dentist chair and ties that to dentist office and ties that to secretary at the dentist office and ties that to side boob and then ties that to vagina. And, you know, the, the connections 
are all reflexes. Your understanding is a reflex, a collection of reflexes. But it still could be called an understanding because when you look back into your brain, when your brain says a word, vagina, and you look back, where did it come up with vagina? You can sort of see the trail. You can say, okay, I said vagina because I said vagina in the dentist story, so I was just saying vagina to be funny. And so you can see a little bit of the trail where that vagina flew out of your mouth. Um, and um, so you have some evidence of where it came from in your subconscious and what the reflexes were that produced it. You have some sense of them. They left some fingerprints, that, you know, you know, footprints. And you can follow it back a little bit into the fog of your subconscious and see why you said that particular thing. And so you can see what your understanding is made out of and that it's made out of connections. It's made out of reflexive connections between conceptual things. That is understanding. And there's no, there's no reason for you now to blow up the word understanding and say understanding isn't a real thing. No, understanding is a real thing. It's just that it's not done in some wishy-washy way. It's done in a mechanical way. But the mechanics has integrity. This is where I think you can go along with that. Because she's dead and buried and an eight-man girl of long time ago. What happens in you me is that we see concept um, we see we see right yeah see he says the word concept they don't like it <laughs> you can say oh, I don't want to say concept because that's too sensible there's a mat it's actually got writing on it we see writing that is the vision that is the input that comes in to the brain it is matched with a concept in the brain, and that begets either an external action or an internal action. But yeah, and the matching, okay, in, in the, the, the native function of the brain is to make those matches, those matches coherent, okay, to reality, all right? So we're born kind of honest, and we want to make honest connections between things, and we are trained okay, by a society running from the truth to make dishonest connections, to break that honest structure that of logic and become unlogical or anti-logical. We're trained to be anti-logical. That's how religion thrives. It breaks the brain of children and makes them anti-logical. I never understand anything. I do not understand writing, just like the... Again, so, you know, to say you don't understand merely because you're saying the word understand means wishy-washy religious talk or something. No, the word understand means I appropriately connect this concept to all these other concepts. So I do understand pliers. I, I can understand that the only the 99.99 percent of the relevancy of this thing is not the material of the handles or not the exact specific carbon content of the steel, but the relevant thing is this aspect, this function, and this is what makes pliers. Pliers are a concept: grabby, grabby, force, force, blah blah blah, pinchy, pinch. Okay, <laughs> that's pliers as a concept, and I can understand it, have it rationally connected to lots of um, things that are relevant to the dynamic of grab. Man girl did not understand what she was doing. I do not understand writing. I do not understand camera, computer, wall. I don't understand any of those things. They are just inputs that come in. They meet a concept in the brain which begets action. No, they don't meet a concept. They meet a, a whole cascade of reflexes. That's why we talk so slowly. 
That's why this all takes so long to communicate. That's why we're not just going, you know, that's why we're not doing that. It's because it takes time for our brain to understand, to go through the filters, the zillions of filters inside of our head, to connect all the things, say, okay, carbon content doesn't matter, blah, blah, blah. And it's mechanically like a computer. It's going through all the different concepts that this could possibly be related to, all the, the do, 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 vagina, it ends up at vagina again. We're at vagina. Vagina is not relevant to pliers, really. Well, maybe possibly if you're removing something like, well, let's not even talk about that. This is disgusting. Um, you, you know, the computer is going through all of these cycles, trying to figure out all the relevancies connected to this thing. And and that is understanding, okay? It doesn't just pop in and then pop right back out. It pops in. It goes through the logic engine. It is understood, okay? <laughs> That's what it does to it. It understandarizes the input, and then produces the the understood associations of relevancy. There is no what we generally call understanding going on at all, ever. Well, again, so that's you never qualified this discussion with any description of what you think I have to accept is the, the meaning of the word understanding. I've always understood the word understanding to mean uh, coherently connect to other rational connected concepts. That's what understanding is. Understanding happens to something where you put this in the context of function, utility, um, history, future. That's understanding. Put this in its context. All the related stuff, all the stuff that has in some way or other a tentacle of relevancy to this. That's what understanding is. I understand that's what my brain does. And I think it's just bullshit to say we don't understand things. No, we do. That's what our brain does. It attempts to contextually understand. We are slightly advanced. And what we can have, the brain, generates a, an, an internal input. It's coming from the inside, but it's coming in as though it was... Um, or should I just do... Yeah, from the inside. And it's the input of, the vision of, the meeting of, the word coming in and meeting the concept. It's done again as a um, as another input which begets either another action or begets another intern you know it just stays internal or it goes yeah so there he's he's he i think he's badly describing the cycling effect of the reflexes the reflexes and the feedback mechanism so the computer it takes the first relevancy thing and says pinch, and so then it sees pinch, and then it takes pinch plus pliers, and then it finds pinch pliers, both P words, so then it comes up with penis, and then it says, well, what, pinch? No, it's not about penises, it's about pliers, so it disregards the penis thing and says, no, it's not about the P word, it's about pliers, not P. Um, and yeah, this is the process of its logical connectingness. This is what's happening in your subconscious. It's it, it, The input is being filtered, okay, through this mechanism of zillions of cycles of the word being bashed around to see what fucking reacts when that word hits it, so to speak, or what kind of, again, I think the string analogy works, but lots of ways to say how are the things connected, and when does the little light go red or green or blue, and that decides how deep or, or interesting that connection is and whether more neural energy should be spent wheeling and dealing about, oh, well, let's not forget the pliers have a little cutter on them, too, so it's also about cutting things. So, yeah, that's a whole new avenue of relevancy, a whole new way to cycle through this and put these things together. And then when it finally comes up with its, its dictionary of words, its, its synonyms and adjectives, and, um, you know, its thesaurus does its work. The thesaurus puts all the related words together, and then it throws it to another program, which is our 
literacy program that composes our sentence structures and says, okay, well, the real point we're making here, the real strongest connection is pliers, is pinch, but pinch, not penis. Okay, but and it's also about this grabby thing and this cutty thing. So, okay, let's construct some sentences that put those words in there and make this coherent. And that's a whole nother program that's running in the subconscious that converts these conceptual connected understanding, connects the understanding into a communication, okay, that uh, goes through a translator of sorts that says, now let's put this into something you can convey to somebody else so they'll understand what you understand. External. You are no nobody would have bloody understood that, though, will they? Well, not the way you said it. <laughs> It, it, you see, the tricky thing is, it must be the ego that gets in the way. It's quite easy to understand, and I think a lot of you would have been a lot, a, on, on board, as they say, with the idea that the, the the vision, the input of the boy saving boy ape man saving the mouse from the river, was an input to the um, ape man girl, and she just actioned it on upon that when it met a concept in the brain. Yeah, and I think your action would have been, <laughs> fuck that loser, look, he's wasting time on mice, fuck that idiot. We could go along with that, but we cannot, seemingly, oh, I doubt it, maybe it has, maybe it has, has, has it? No, I bet it hasn't. We cannot um, imagine, because we're programmed not to, I suppose, that the input of words meet concepts in the brain and they make for external actions or internal actions. Because, and they, but they do it by formula. Like I said, we do learn formula. We do learn that when something comes in, that some of it becomes trained, automatic. We know certain pi formulas, and certain e equals mc squared formulas, and some of those formulas are just about what we know as regular dynamics, like knife. We can reliably know the formula that that knife is going to be associated usually with the the destruction of something. It's not going to. It doesn't build things. It cuts things. It breaks them down. It tears them apart. And some some of these things become formulatic in terms of of the 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 response mechanism. And um, I could. There's more. I, I there's better analogies to the formula mechanism that I'm I'm. I'm not off the top of my head coming up with, but it's it's like there are dynamics in in life that make it possible for us to do this glass is half empty, glass half full equation math. We say no, we understand words, but we're quite happy to say that the eight man girl didn't understand what she was doing. Or we, we're quite happy to say a mouse doesn't understand what it's doing. Well, see, now you're putting in different context in the word understand, right? It's understanding the concept, but understanding how you're being manipulated by your um, mechanics is another kind of understanding. So that's a different subject. So unlike pliers, now you're talking about brain function. So now we're not talking about a thing in the world. We're talking about how does the machine actually work. So now the machine is the subject. So understanding the fact that you are a machine, that you have reflexive reactions, is another conceptual understanding. And yes, the primitives didn't spend too much time contemplating the function of their consciousness because they didn't really understand what a brain was, the social dynamics, memes, ideas. So they really didn't have a context to do that in. They didn't have the, the structure to understand the mechanism of programming and all of that and we do so now we can talk about the function of our brain and and but i don't think i, I don't think it's i don't think it's you're, you're now now you're mixing two things you're mixing how our brain functions and our analysis of brain function and obviously we're experiencing one of them in having you know in being i'm, I'm experiencing being a brain and yes i can also have a conversation about what it is brain is doing But we are so much more advanced. We understand what we're doing. No, we don't. 
No, by we, you mean all the dumbasses, right? You don't mean like me and you don't, because I think me and you do understand <laughs> what, what we're doing. And we do understand how we've been molded and constructed into these reflexive reactions to the world we see. Yeah, I think me and you do understand. It's exactly the same process. There's been nothing in geological time from ape, ape-man, man-ape, man, where it changed. It's no, I think it did. It's, as soon as you invented language, it changed, okay? Because now um, you could store all this information, and so now the context could get so much more precise. And so you could now do this thing where you could have words that describe these connections. You could have the word reflex. You could understand the concept of a reflex and how reflexes could be tied in a chain and, and how they could branch and how they could have, you know, if-then statements, um, if-or statements. They could have these, these programming language concepts could be understood, and that changes the dynamic of function. And now we understand that this psychology is programmable and that some of it's conditioned. Some of it's built into you by nature. You know, you're, you're the, the crudest of biology in terms of visual um, glandular reactions to your chemistry and the disposition of those glands. And then some of it is this conditioned crap where, yes, it's a running program. It's pretty hardwired. But if you retrain it, okay, you can change those reflexes. So, so these reflexes have a hardness to them. Some are really hard reflexes, and some of them are mutable reflexes, and they're on this scale. So these are all things that I think radically change the dynamic, because now it's about ideas being exchanged, and the ideas evolving, sentences being perfected. <clears throat> it's so much not about knee-jerk human reactions. Now the filter is in the environment itself. The whole environment of all people are using each other's communication to create the filtering of ideas. It's never changed. It's always been the, chain, the same. And you can go all the way back to amoeba. It's been always, always the same. Well, see, I, I just think that's just a, such a way preposterous overstatement because it doesn't even, it doesn't even get into amoeba could have a reflexive mechanism, but we know that our reflexive mechanism is entirely unique in the sense that it is first, our first reflexive reaction is got these feelings things tied to things, these automatic value statements, these built-in formulas, as I was saying before, that force a reaction, okay, that, uh, that have all this emotional and sensation data that is put in, that, that is dripped right on top of our perception, our other sentences. Of reality, so the sixth sense of emotion and 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 thought is dripped right on top of reality as it comes in through these other sentence, senses, um, and that's a very different function. Feedback is a very different function. So not to acknowledge that the fact that it is feedback and that there are essentially two minds: the first mind creating the sensation problem, and the second mind experiencing the sensation problem and saying, I have to fix the sensation problem. i got to do something. What do I do? And asking the logic device to give it a solution. What has developed has been the idea of holding a concept and the in external input or internally gen generated input meets that concept and then actions another internal swirling or external action. Yeah, groups of reflexes. Maybe we should call them that, okay? That there's chains or nodes or classes or um, what, pods of, of, uh, of con concept, you know, and, and that these pods, you know, are, are um, again, like muscle memory, like throwing a baseball. It's a pod of reflexive reaction. Once it's trained, once it's cleaned, once it's created... It, it, there's a point where it perfects itself, essentially. It, it, it's, it's, that's what happens. You, you click in, and it, you get the output automatically. It's, it's almost a um, reach. You know, you just reach. It's, it's been so practiced that now there, there's very little in it anymore of, 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 of computation. It's no longer a computational reflex. It's purely a 
product reflex. So it creates a, a sequence of behavior that it has learned this is the sequence for reach. Those things in you, it's, it's, it's unlikely that amoeba do that sort of thing. Uh, flies probably do. They can probably hold a concept. But we understand exactly the same amount as a fly does. So you can say, a fly understands what it's doing, and we understand what we're doing. Yeah, I just don't think it's a good idea to compare the two. We don't know exactly what goes on in fly consciousness, so, you know, how connected that, you know, I just don't think it's an applicable world. I, I word. I think flies learn, they feel what they're doing, though. I just don't think there's a real point in saying it's the same. I don't think there's, you know, hundreds of millions of years of evolutionary distance between us and a fly. And it's the differences probably mean something. Or you can say, I don't understand what I, I'm doing, and the fly doesn't understand what it's doing. You cannot have a dividing line where, for some reason... But we do. Again, like I said, we can analyze this device. Flies can't self-analyze. We can self-analyze. And it's not even a magical function. I mean, it's just logical. We can turn ourselves into pliers, and we can say, "What do we do? What do we? How do we function? What are our parts? How does it? What does it do? What do you, when you do this or when you do that? Or how much pressure can you put on? Does it break? Does it? Is it cheap? Is it Chinese? We can do all that. And we can do that to ourselves, and that's not magic." You just sit there and say, I'm one of the things in the world, like a plier, I will analyze me. <laughs> yeah, no big deal. That nobody knows. You certainly don't. There was a, there's something happened where we now know what we're doing. No. Absolutely not. Well, again, I just think that's crap. We do know why I have certain proclivities like maybe I don't know how what percentage of the shit I know that's in my psychology I can say oh yeah I know where that came from oh yeah I can see where that was a you know a hyper um, exaggeration of you know my insecurity when I was seven or some other I can I can find this shit okay and it's there to be seen if you want to go find it so it's just, I just think it's wrong to say I can't really understand some of these nodes and these dynamics. I can't understand the nodes. I can understand the dynamics. I can understand the concept of programming. I can understand the concept of a reflex and how you train it, how, how redundancy would make it harder and more firm. I can understand that shit. Come on. That dividing line will not be found because it does not exist. Well, again, so I'm just, that's a, just such an emphatic statement, and I just think it's nonsense, and I don't even think there's a dividing line. I think the only dividing line is this is an external thing in the world, and now I'm just saying that even though my eyes are doing this looking thing, I'm just saying, look, I just imagine myself looking at myself. I can analyze me. I can analyze me just like a pair of pliers, and I can see that, oh, the real thing is this joint in the middle, and I can say, oh, yeah, the real thing is this. This, this associating brain that you know, ties concepts together, and uh, I, you know, I cannot do that. So I just I think that's just a, an obnoxiously inarticulate, uh, uh, excessive, um, preposterously excessive statement. It just there's just uh, yeah, it's just not true. We've changed a lot in terms of our function by understanding the function because now we can say no to the function we can see ourselves being asshole we our brain can say i recognize that brain function i've seen that brain function before we've talked about how that's not playing proper chess that's not marcus of queensbury rules you're being an asshole my brain can recognize my own brain's misfunction and it can say to it you're misfunctioning now. Uh, we'd like to discourage that because you're coming up with the wrong answer. The right answer isn't Gary's more important than the rest of the people on Earth. That's the wrong answer. I mean, it can do that. It can say error, error to my own bullshit. And a fly can't do that. Probably enough of that. Um, it is. It's my lunchtime. Bye.
Yeah, well, I guess you're a victim of your uh, choice. I mean, the fact that you have no program that finds habit <laughs> repulsive um, and might say, well, yeah, maybe I could do another three minutes. I don't really have to eat exactly on time. Um, but whatever. Um, so, yeah, I don't think you did a very good job on this one. That's my opinion. But anyway, enough of the video. Sorry, long videos. I only played half of it and I still got into big trouble, right? I mean, we're talking half an hour again, yeah. Sorry.